Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with The Legend of Korra, book 3, episode number 11 and 12, reaction. Okay, the previous episode, um, it was uh, Korra's team trying to uh, bring back Ai Wei. And uh, in, in that journey, like, you know, through, like, you know, we kind of tailed him and, like, you know, went to the place where he was. We tailed him, kind of kept tabs on him where he was and was waiting for him to meet Zaheer because we got to know that he was meeting Zaheer at a certain place. I forgot the name of that place. Later on, they realized that that place was actually in the spirit world where they go and see uh, Ai Wei and Zaheer having a conversation. Uh, as soon as, like, you know, it, it seemed as if Zaheer was going to do something to Ai Wei, so Kora tried to come and intervene. Unfortunately, it kind of worked oppositely because he ended up throwing Zahir, uh, Ai Wei into the like you know the the fox like you know the, uh, the what was i forgot the name the valley of fog i think some, something like that the name and uh yeah so we don't know whether we'll get ai way back or not maybe we will but it'll have to wait now because we have a bigger problem now zahi talks with cora keeps her occupied while her uh, like you know his uh, friends go and try to get cora and there's quite a few interesting things that he tells cora First of all, they're from the Red Lotus. Number two is that Unalak was like you know involved in all of this. Unfortunately, he was a scum, so he actually uh, you know kind of you could say like you know betrayed them and tried to become the Dark Avatar and you know what happened in season two. And uh, another thing is that um, what their goal is, their goal is to uh, make the place so there's like no uh, what do you call it leader. Or something like that like leaders like Raiko and the Earth Queen they are not good you know like Raiko is an idiot and the Earth Queen is selfish so people like them according to him you know like they need to be stopped and since they realize that the White Lotus won't be able to do so because they have become glorified bodyguards and like you know uh, unlike the in the days of the uh, of Aang they are basically people who just do the job for the people who pay the most money, the White Lotus. According to, uh, you know, Zaheer, by the way, like, we don't know if this is true or not. Um, so he was like, yeah, that's why we, the Red Lotus, have tried to, like, you know, take over and we are trying to do and change this world. And yeah, by the end of it, Korra gets captured. Unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately, not by Zaheer, but by the Earth Queen. While uh, Marco and Bolin, they get captured by Zaheer. And in the next episode, uh, uh, Zaheer comes and tries to exchange, you know, Korra with Marco and Bolin. And uh, by the end of it, you know, like he takes the decision of killing, I think, the Earth Queen. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the Earth Queen is dead. And uh, damn, the way he did it, like took the air from her lungs and suffocated her in her own breath. Like, damn, that's yeah and while Korra and um, Asami on the other hand they were stuck with uh, the people bringing them there and in the desert a lot of things happened we kind of make, made friends with the captain though uh, and uh, yeah now in the end we see Zuko, Stone Rock and uh, uh, Lin all at the same place and uh, yeah let's see what happens after that so this is episode number 11 of The Legend of Korra, book 3. Let's get started. I'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here. Sync it to whichever is your preference and let's start. Okay, here's the countdown. 3, 2, 1, go. <clears throat> oh yeah, this happened. Yep. The ultimatum. Oh my god, that doesn't sound good. Oh my god, everyone's <laughs> just grabbing this stuff. Oh my god. Wait, what? Oh my god, yo!
Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Can we hijack one? And we are going to hijack one. Will they? Yeah, I, I thought so. Nah. Okay. Bullet. Yes, that's gonna work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the almighty knock duck. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, I don't... Oh my god, okay. Yeah, it's supposed to go up. <laughs> ah, no, there you go. Wow, everything's just burning. If people are doing whatever the hell they want to. Yeah. Oh wow. All right. Okay, there there they are. Oh no, they're like Yeah, it's their place. Oh no. I don't think uh, yeah but home is where people yeah home is where the uh, people exactly that's home oh my god i thought she oh <laughs> oh yeah she, I don't know why she had this weird attachment to the Earth Queen. Probably, like, you know, like, I'm, I'm guessing a lot of people of the, probably had, like, a good, what do you call it, good impression of the Earth Queen and thought, like, oh, she's doing everything for the better or something. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. Does it need more? I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. Maybe the air temple? Hmm. Okay, but they're somewhere else completely now, so... Uh, this will be a problem. Like they're going to try to find each other, but wouldn't find each other. Hmm. Oh. Okay. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay, they can follow the tracks. That's good. Alright, this might work. And there you go. Zuko's dragon is there. My god! Yo! Yeah! <laughs> yeah. I'm sure she's here. Yeah. <laughs> Big rat. Wait. What? <laughs> hmm. 
Dog be stinging. Ah, uh, Naga's here. <laughs> okay, there they are. Nah. <laughs> well, that's awkward. There you go. And the Fire Lord Zuko. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yes. Yin. Okay, that's her name. Well, she's the avatar. It rains, you know. <laughs> well, about that. About that. Hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, the the message. Oh my god. What the hell? Okay, this is Yeah, this is get, getting out of line. Hmm. Okay. Oh yeah. Middle. Oh, back back to, to in, Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah, Opal is there, I forgot. Who wants the answer? Yeah, like, these guys can go ahead and we they can keep trying to get them through radio oh okay <laughs> okay <laughs> okay, is he? Is he here? Oh yeah, he's Oh, it's it's Iroh! Iroh! Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. That's true. Oh yeah, he, she can talk to Zuko. Yeah. True. Yeah. 
<laughs> Not a little, but a lot. Yeah, I forgot about that. Like, Zuka can talk about... All right. Okay, there he is. Hmm. Daughter? Who's his daughter? Yeah. Hmm. Oh my god. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the spirit world. Okay. Oh my god, it's Milo. Alright. Alright, you two. <laughs> These two are the worst combination. <laughs> okay. Well, Bolin. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, there you go. <clears throat> Is he here? Oh my god, he's already here. Oh lord. Oh. Oh great, what now? Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, and these people are like new airbenders. They can't even properly fight. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god, it's Opal! Oh. oh my god Damn. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay, this is a problem. <coughs> uh. 
sad. All right, the bike. Okay. Oh. Oh, oh my god. Oh, okay. Yeah, like Denzel's a ma airbending master. Like, you know, like, even though Zahir is really good, I doubt he can do airbending as good as Denzel. But the problem here is the other two the lava bender and the water bender. Damn. Oh my god. Ah. Oh my god. Whoa, that's G. Oh. Where's Boomy? Okay. Nice. Okay, nice. There you go. I'm pretty sure she is... Yeah. Ugh. Oh, there's Boomy and the lava. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, this is a very bad matchup. Oh, yo, move. <laughs> Come on. Okay, nice, nice, nice. There you go. There you go. If you, if you grab him. Yes, yes. Yes. Come on, come on. <laughs> I thought that would work. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my god, he's going to Okay. Oh my god. All right, her weak point. They, okay, nice. Yeah, you can't get her, get him over there. Come on, go to the blind spot, you know? Oh my God. Oh my god. Oh. Oh my god. Oh nice, okay. Oh. <clears throat> oh my god oh thank god for the trees okay Tenzin is handling himself really well there you go but but uh, the problem is the other three yeah this is the problem here like, what do we do? Oh. oh my god. Oh, damn. Oh.
Oh my god. Okay, the bison got him. I think. Oh no, the, the tree got him. Alright, let, let's go. Oh my god. Oh my god, this episode, what the hell? Oh. Okay. <sighs> Alright, so... Oh my god, this, this, okay, this, uh, this was insane. So, we start with, um, the whole chaos, you know, everything's like going down in Ba Sing Se. And, uh, people are just doing whatever the hell they want to, like, you know, they're burning the place. They're kind of grabbing stuff from the, um, you know, from the palace and all whatnot. Now, you know what? Here's the thing. Um, this is what happens when people don't respect the leader, you know, like, like, I'm pretty sure like everyone had like such a big grudge on the Earth Queen. Now that she's gone, you know, I I'm pretty sure like more than half of the people are very happy and they are just doing whatever the hell they want to. They're just taking their stuff from the palace and everything. Like, this is a reason, like, you know, like, why, like, you know, like, what can I say, like, your people, like, you know, like, she, she, she was, like, the worst leader that anyone could ever get. She was selfish, she was cruel, she was, she was bad, she was a bad person. And uh, there you go, like, you know, like, this is what happens when people don't respect you. Like, after her death, everyone's just having a field day now. And, uh, <clears throat> like like and and people who are getting involved in this are just innocent people who are just getting mixed up in this whole nonsense now i do like you know like understand what zahir is trying to do that he as he said like, he wants to take out all the leaders and he wants Korra's help that's why he's doing all of this but this is definitely not the way like this is what makes him a villain you know like he he involved a whole nation just because he wanted the leader of the nation to pay and look at what happened now like they he could have gone like you know if, if he really was i don't know like you know like like he could have gone through this in a in a different manner you know like the way he did it is definitely not something that he should have done if he had an ounce of concern for the normal people people who are not involved and i guess that's what makes him a villain here and uh, because he he doesn't care about the sacrifices it would take to build up the nation that he thinks is required so basically you know like he he doesn't care about the leaders and at the same time he equally doesn't care about the people because he thinks that this sacrifice is going to help him make a better nation where there will be better people but that's just flawed logic you know why should people who are not involved in any of this nonsense get to like you know face this type of you know like this type of like you know thing here that's happening here this this chaos why should why should they be the victim here the earth queen was at a, like you know a, a bad person she should get uh, justice not the others and uh, yeah like this this is where everything i guess you could say it gets diverse like i i up until now i was kind of rooting for like you know when when he was like, you know, going to defeat the earth queen i was kind of rooting for him and then as soon as he pulls up this nonsense of like you know bossing say everyone's free and this nonsense happens he breaks down the wall and everyone's just like having a field day people are destroying everything and just you know like um, innocent people are getting involved I'm like, no, this is where I will have to say that, nah, I don't support you anymore. Because, mm, definitely not. And not only this, like, you know, he planned, I think he probably planned a similar thing with Republic City as well. It's just that he left because he wanted to get out of that city that, and did not take out Raikou. That nothing like that happened in Republic City because he didn't have enough time and he wasn't you know at a proper advantage the same thing would have happened there as well the the way this is happening in Ba Sing Se so yeah 
Okay, so we at first we uh, see Marco and Bolin. They need like an airship, and uh, they get into the airship where everyone was just grabbing stuff, like kind of breaking it and taking stuff, valuable things from it. <laughs> and Bolin is like, "Oh, there's like a treasure at the third floor or something." <laughs> they just leave, and they get an airplane or airships, whatever. And uh, <clears throat> All right, they are floating and they're seeing like, you know, the whole chaos that's happening and they go and try to rescue their family. Now, I kind of knew this would happen because obviously uh, the the grandma or yeah, the grandma, the grandma uh, was uh, someone who is, you could say, you know, like, like we've seen this, like, you know, old people kind of do this. They get attached to the place and everything. That's why, you know, like they, they don't like to. Uh, leave a place where they've been born and everything like this this is one thing that like you know like that that happens like you know like the attachment to the place like i'm saying old people but i don't know maybe when we get old as well we will have the same thing as well <laughs> you know where we'll be like oh this is the place where we were born or something i don't know like you know different people different way they look at the world <clears throat> but i'm i was i was pretty sure this was going to happen she was going to say something like oh i'm not going to leave you know like even even if this whole place goes down i'm going to die here or something like that she would say and there you go that's what she was saying you know like we we come in and she was like i'm not going to leave here this is like you know this is our home why should i like you know go get out of here and uh, you know like I'm, I'm going to be here and all that so bolin like obviously bolin and uh, like you know they they kind of say like you know like what it is is the people you know wherever there is our people and family that's your home home is where your loved ones are and that can be anywhere and uh, which was also something that i also believe you know like like just because you know like something is happening like this is like an emergency situation and just because of I don't know what can I say like you know emotions sentiment just like giving up your life and all like you know like and just yeah like leaving your actual family behind just because you were attached to the place is not something that I I would say like it's it's not something that you should do because you know like as Bolin and like you know Marco said like family is where your loved ones are and it's not just a place it's it's the people you are with that's home and yeah okay so uh, at, obviously she was not like you know kind of at first <laughs> they kind of baited us at that moment the way in, when bolin was kind of explain bolin and marco was kind of explaining all that <laughs> the grandmother was kind of like you know tearing up and then she's suddenly like no i'm not going <laughs> i'm like damn <laughs> they baited us i was going to say like the grandma was going to say was something like all right you're right probably but she was like, nope, I'm not going. <laughs> Bolin just grabs her and it's like, yep, then I'm, I'm going to take you forcefully out of here. And they get out and, um, oh, she grabs the uh, picture of the queen, Earth Queen. And, uh, yeah, they get into the airship and Marco and Bolin get, try to find Korra now. Now, here I was thinking that they're going to have a problem with trying to let, locate Korra. It was a fact is that Korra is act Korra and Asami are somewhere else and they were going to the wreckage where obviously they won't be there but thank god the tracks were there so they were able to kind of track the track you know track them down and uh reach the place where they were and uh, all right like everyone like you know has like a good uh what do you call it like you know, a good um what do you call it like they, they meet each other you know like they uh, I forgot the actual term that you use for that. Anyways, <laughs> and um, Pabu comes in, Naga, everyone's there, and it's just then Marco and Asami. Uh, no, sorry, uh, uh, Cora and Asami. They they both also come out out. <laughs> As the fact that <laughs> Marco hugged Cora and then he was like, "Oh, I'm sorry," <laughs> and Cora's like, "It's okay." And uh, yeah, then we meet Zuko, our Lord Savior Zuko. He's just standing there, and <laughs> Bolin's like, "Oh, it's Lord Zuko! Look at this! Oh, <laughs> oh, 
uh, he was acting so awkward. He was like, ah, no, it's not. It's in an actual flesh in front of me. <laughs> uh, okay, now. Oh my god. And <laughs> then the grandmother was like, looks at Asami and is like, oh, are you the avatar? And my was like, no, this is the avatar. This is Korra. My grandma's like, wait, you, you're kind of muscly, aren't you? <laughs> and then she's like, oh, well, you both of you are wonderful. Marco, why aren't you dating, <laughs> dating them? And I'm like, oh, if you knew, if you knew what happened, then grandmother would probably have fainted. I don't know, maybe he, she would have said something else. <laughs> like, who knows? Uh, and, uh, yeah. Now, uh, all that, like, jokes is apart. Uh, the serious stuff comes up, and um, Marco and uh, Bolin actually uh, give the message that Zahi told them to give Korra. That is, they're going to come to the air temple, and, you know, like, unless and until Korra gives herself up, she, like, you know, he is going to take their family hostage, this and that, and uh, yeah. So what they try to do is they go to the metal, like, you know, like the metal vendors and uh, to Suyin's place and use the radio to try to get hold of uh, Tenzin. Unfortunately, it's not working, uh, but at the same time, the time is also taking. So they're like, what should we do? So Korra decides to meditate and go and meet Zahir. And uh, Asami was there with her as well, uh, keeping an eye on her body. And Korra goes into the spirit world, and lo and behold, Iroh is here. And uh, as Iroh said, that <laughs> like you know, we always find something that we like. Whenever we try to find something, we don't find that. We, we but we find something else, which is equally important, or something like he said. Okay, in the spirit world, you always seem to find something you didn't know you were looking for. There you go. And um, yeah, both Cora, like you know, Cora needed to meet Iroh at this point, especially because she was troubled. And Iroh gives her, uh, like you know, some advice. And he is like, yeah, if you like, you know, want to talk to Ang, you could go and talk to Zuko because Zuko was Ang's best friend. It started a bit rocky, but yeah, they became really good friends later on. So, and I, I honestly speaking, I forgot about that for a moment. I was like, yeah, it's true. Like, you know, if, if he, she needs really some kind of advice, Zuko could help because Zuko has been with Aang for so long and I'm pretty sure Zuko probably would be able to answer how Korra should handle this situation. So Korra is like, all right, let's do that. He comes out and she comes out and goes to Zuko. Now, interesting fact here, Zuko has a daughter. He says like uh, I need to protect my daughter. That's why she was, he was going back. Um. All right. I wonder who he married. Like Zuko. I don't know. I have no idea. Uh. I don't even know if the like you know the um what do you call it? Korra. Like you know this this show is going to tell us that because there's a lot of things that I have actual questions about. First of all, <laughs> this is like something not unrelated, but first of all. What happened to Saka and uh, Suki? You know, like what happened to them? And uh, then, um, what was his name? Toph, Toph. Who did Toph marry? And as far as I could gather, like Toph has like I I don't know like you know, it's like half. Both the daughters are like you know like you know like a half siblings. So that means did Toph remarry or something? Like what happened there? That's also another question I have. Who did Zuko marry? That's another question. And like these are all the questions. Like I don't know. Like and I'm I'm probably going to if if they don't answer these questions, I'll probably try to find it out on my own. Like probably research. But I'm not going to do that now in case I get spoiled about something. So after Korra ends, I'll probably try to check it out on my own because I have no idea if like you know like we have any kind of explanation about all these things but anyways um, enough about that uh, Zuko is like all right so what do you want to know and Korra asks him what should she do <clears throat> and Zuko is like um, I'm pretty sure Aang would have sacrificed himself you know if he wanted to protect something 
uh, that he forever wanted to do and building the air nation was one of his biggest uh, dreams and uh, <coughs> Pura is like but so what should I do should I give myself up <coughs> and she says like uh, but Aang was concerned about everyone not only the air nation so no one knew better than Aang that in times of turmoil the world needs its avatar the most which is True, and this is not only the Air Nation, but Zahir is probably a threat to everyone. Like, to, yeah, to everyone. So, yeah, like, I don't know, like, and I don't know what Cora should do, but she, yeah, she should definitely do something, I guess. I, I don't know what that advice was, but I am clearly confused as to what Zuko tried to say here. But probably something along those lines that, yeah, like, you know, this is your decision. Um, and yeah, I feel like you should do what you want to or something like that. I'm, I'm not sure. But the, the conversation kind of got interrupted as they got to uh, see that uh, the, the, the message has gone through, through the radio. And oh my God, Bolin and Milo, this is a combination which is, <laughs> which is just... Oh my god, not good at least at this moment because we're in an emergency. Milo's like, who is this? And well, Bolin's like, I'm Bolin. And he's like, Bolin is not here. And <laughs> Bolin's like, no, I'm not talking about Bolin, but I am Bolin. <laughs> Milo's like, my dad has gone to, uh, like, you know, like, uh, everyone's uh, like with the bisons and all. And we tamed a herd. And Bolin's like, oh, really? Is that so? And again, they get distracted. Korra just shoves him off. And <laughs> Korra is like, commanding officer, go get your dad. <laughs> Milo just rushes. Oh my god. So yeah, Korra's like, Tenzin, you need to get out. And Tenzin's like, too late. They're here. And uh, they gather everyone, uh, Zahir's team, and uh, oh boy. Now the problem here was that there's not enough people, you know, to help us out. Like, we had three proper air, not even three, two, two pro proper vendors who actually can bend. Like, you know, like, um, Tenzin and uh, Kaya. These two. Everyone else were new. Even though Bhumi was able to handle himself pretty well, but still, that was, like, you know, like, like he's also new. He's just an apprentice. So is Kai. So, two versus four of the strongest people, like, how? how? How can you do this? And not only that, they also have to protect the people behind them. So, obviously, Kaya and uh, Tenzin cannot do something on their own. Tenzin would be easily able to handle Zaheer, but not when the other three comes out and they start attacking him as well at the same time. So, basically, that's what happened. So... At first, Zahir, Zahir was like, we just want Korra with us. So, yeah, if you keep quiet and, you know, like, do what we tell you to, nothing will happen. We won't harm you. But obviously, Tenzin was like, no, I'm not letting Korra anywhere near you. And he, he, like, he just did, like, a surprise attack, told everyone to get out, took Kaya and Bhumi and started to defend. And... He was easily able to actually counter Zahir, even though Zahir is a good airbender, Tenzin is a master airbender, and obviously, like, you know, Zahir has a long way to go. So, Tenzin was just completely dominating him, while at the other side, um, Kaya and the girl, the, the waterbender girl, um, even though Kaya was strong, I feel like the girl was even stronger than her. And she was actually kind of, what can I say, like, you know, overpowering her. Well, obviously, like, you know, Bhumi and the lava guy, like, how, what else do you even expect, you know, like, Bhumi is new, he, he's been airbending for I don't know how much time, one month, two months, I'm not even sure, while this guy is, I guess you could say that he's earthbending, nah, he, he has been earthbending for a long time, like, I was going to say, like, you know, he was in prison, so he didn't earthbend for a long time, but still, he was a bender, so from the beginning, like, he's, he's also a master. And he can lava bend or whatever, like, like how, how can, how is this a good matchup even? So, I was really impressed with um, Kaya versus the other girl. 
the way they were fighting like my god like you know especially when the girl used her hands water hands and kind of froze the tip of it and kind of used it as a blade or a chain or whatever you know kind of swinging it around and it almost got kaya but kaya kind of you know kind of broke it down and threw it to the ice icicle back at her which she took again and threw it back at her at kaya like that whole section was really good i i really enjoyed that part you know that like you know one after the other the choreography and all and damn while <laughs> everything like all these cool things are happening while boom is just running from <laughs> from the lava guy he's just running away and <laughs> like good for him i guess he, he actually was able to kind of i guess injure him you could say like he somehow snuck past the whole thing and just went like you know went <laughs> underneath his legs got back and grabbed onto him so yeah like he cannot use lava bending on his own self so that was quite a um what can i say like an you know, intelligent move you could say but unfortunately he just used earth bending to kind of you know like shake him off so yeah there were oh, i also love the fact that he actually <laughs> tried to <laughs> tried to pull his hair off bite him and everything but nothing worked yeah like they're pro airbender uh, uh, pro benders and while Boomy has been airbending for a few months, I think. Okay, on the other side, uh, the girl, the 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 the, the three-eyed girl, the the one who does the the explosion. Uh, she was keeping an eye on the others, and Kai here tried to kind of distract her, go out and take him, take her down. Unfortunately, he was able to kind of do some damage to her and distract him, but yeah like she kind of kind of attacked him he f fell down while at the other side kaya and bumi also fell down and uh, they let go thankfully the trees were there you know like they were not ha that much harmed but they are injured they fell down while kai got stuck to a tree and uh, the baby bison kind of took him and i don't know what kai is going to do now hopefully he's able to do something here um i don't know sabotage the um you know the airship or something maybe or who knows maybe she, he can sneak in or something he do something i guess but we'll have to wait for that while tenzin himself was easily dominating um the whole fight uh between zahir and him unfortunately as soon as all the other three kind of uh lost uh the 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 team zahir's team members were able to concentrate their battle and focus their attacks on Tenzin and four versus one is definitely not a good matchup at all however how big of a master Tenzin could be like kind of trying to stop uh, an airbender a waterbender a earthbender or lava bender and the the explosion girl impossible like like it's impossible really like you know like still he was really keep like you know kind of pulling uh, like you know, trying to keep himself okay and like you know fighting and doing doing a very good job. Unfortunately, yeah, he wasn't able to keep going and uh, yeah, he's very much injured. Now I don't know what's going to happen. Let's go to the next episode and hopefully everything, yeah, everything goes fine. But we'll have to see. Yeah. Okay, so the next episode, episode number 12, yeah, 12, so yeah, let's get started. So this is episode number 12 of The Legend of Korra, book 3. I'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here, sync it whichever is your preference, and let's get started. Okay, here's the countdown. 3, 2, 1, go. Mm. 
Yeah. Enter the void. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, true. Valley. Okay. Oh my god. Alright. What? No. <laughs> and okay. Nah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she's thinking about giving herself. Ugh. Damn. Oh no. Okay, well. Yeah, okay. What? Then no. Oh my god. <laughs> oh wow, look at them. The, yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> Red thing. Okay. Okay, so what did he say? Oh my god, again Lahima. How? Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. That this might work. Yeah. Yeah. This is a good idea. Mm. Lee. I always forget her name. Okay. Warlord. Oh my god. <sighs> All right. Oh. 
hope this works. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's go. Damn. <laughs> Okay, um... Yeah... Okay. Ah, uh, is it okay? They just ah. Uh, okay, okay. Hope this isn't a trap or something. Why not bring them outside? What the hell? Why are we going inside a? Okay. Alright, let's get the confirm. Oh my god. Yeah. This is a negotiation. That's why we agreed. What the hell? Oh my god. Oh. Alright, now let them go. Oh my god, I really hope this is not a trap. Oh my god. These are dummies. This this is a tr great. What the hell? Now they became like the typical villains like Yeah. Like what type of nonsense is this? All right, this is enough. Like just wipe them out now. Oh, great. Can she get into the... Oh, she... Oh, my God. God damn platinum. All right. They're here. Okay. Well... Oh, God. Oh, my God. Okay. Oh boy. Damn. Oh. 
Oh, a knife. Oh my god. Okay. Oh. Okay, ah, uh, this will be a better matchup. I hope so. Yeah, now they're act like now they're acting like typical villains. Like they, I don't know. Like they had integrity. Like that's why I liked them. But now, what the hell was that? Like they just. Okay. Oh my god. Oh. Oh okay. Wow, great. I really hope Kai sneaked in or did something to the airship. Oh my god, the lava is getting in. Yeah, the lava is coming. Hmm. Hmm. Oh God. Can we please get the shackles? How do we even do that? Like, Maybe some. F oh God. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Nice. There you go. Oh. Damn. Oh my God. Oh my god. Oh. Wow, she can yeah, she can curb the thing. Oh. Oh my god. Oh my no. Come on, this is your chance. Sue. Oh! Oh my god, what the hell? That was a technique I oh god. Oh my god. Oh no, he is oh great. He is <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah. He said, let go of your earthly, like, as soon as something happened to plea, like, I'll talk about this later, like, oh, thank God he's safe. Oh, no. What the hell? Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. Did he did he love a band? I think he did. Yes. Okay, there he is. Where are the others? Can this little thing even carry so much weight? Oh my god, I don't think, I don't think, okay. Oh my god. I, I feel like the airbenders are probably on the airship. Vera. Oh god. All right, um... Ah! <laughs> yeah, not metal bending, but lava bending is good. Yeah, what did he wanted to? Okay, please listen to him. Yeah, he entered the void, the the place where Ang went to. I feel like. Yeah. Okay, please listen to him. Okay. Oh. Oh. What? Oh my god, there's more of them. Oh, the, is that Ogi? Okay. Oh my god. This is like a new character get introduced. <laughs> All right, here he is. The flea is dead. Most probably they... No. Okay. He entered the void. Yeah, like after Flea's death. They, I was just going to say that because she was his shackle to the... Like, you know, that was tethering him on Earth. 
Yeah. And as soon as she was gone, he was able to get that out. Because Aang wasn't able to do that because of uh, um, Katara. But he was able to do that as soon as he saw her death. He has no more earthly bounds. Shut up, nobody, no. What? The hell is that? Is that Mercury? Oh my god. What the hell? Ha oh, great. Ah, oh. well, this was a mess. <sighs> okay, so uh, this episode, it uh, everything goes wrong here, and uh, yeah. First of all, Cora decides to give herself up because that's the only way she could think of. Come, they're gonna getting something out of this situation. How to save everyone? Otherwise, like you know, like they're going to uh, they're going to wipe out the Airbenders. Now, I would say I I I really like you know what can I say? Like I I liked Zaheer and their crew because uh like you know like comparable to the all the other villains that we saw is because he had integrity. So the whole section of him actually tricking them and not keeping the word actually just lowered my what do you call it like you know my favorability yeah you could say for these people and i'm like nah they they, they just stooped down to the same low that all the others villain did I, I i could say that they are a lot better than the other villains but still like you know i i really hope that i could think of them as the cool villains but unfortunately that won't be happening as because the integrity that they showed is gone now because as soon as they broke their promises now yeah you could say that oh this is something like you know like you know like they they had their conviction to you know stoop that low and even they had the conviction to go forward even though they lost one of their people which is flea and uh, you know like you could say that but that doesn't excuse what can i say like this whole thing that they did they promised them something and they did not follow that up and yeah that that is that is the thing and i f i feel like villains good villains especially are villains that should have integrity people have different uh people have different way of looking at the world that's why obviously there will be problems and there will be conflict and usually one of the sections are considered as the protagonist and the heroes while the other section are considered as the antagonist or the villain and uh, when like you know like a, a good villain is someone who we 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 can actually root for you know who we actually root for and who we actually think that oh like you know at least they are respectable in some manner or something you know and I, I, I thought they were like, you know, what can I say? Like, you know, they, they, these, these three, these four of them, they had that thing, you know, however slight it is. But these couple of episodes, the previous episode, this episode, that kind of plummeted down. And, you know, as soon as they decided to, like, you know, plunge the whole passing saying to chaos, and then now, like, you know, them, like, breaking their word, I'm like, nah, they, they, they just, they just stooped to the low that. Like, you know like ordinary villains stoop to but i guess at least they're better than unalok like unalok is the worst of the worst so i guess it's kind of okay that they are at least better than him and you know what another thing they are actually um, these these folk are actually respectable human beings you could say they they have certain goals and uh, yeah like i guess for that goal they can sacrifice 
you know they they have that conviction you could say that's one thing but still like you know like i yeah like you know they're, they're okay villains but i i thought that i was I, I would be by the end of this season i would be able to put them in some kind of pedestal and would be like oh like look at them like you know they, they are like perfect villains but unfortunately that won't be happening anymore like you know these two episodes the whole thing with ba Sing say and this it it just yeah you know but as i said like you know don't get me wrong i like them as characters but unfortunately i won't be putting them on that pedestal anymore <laughs> But yeah. Okay, so these characters, uh, uh, sorry, and uh, the kind of the Korra and the crew, they decide to do something else now. They are like, all right, so you know what are we going to do? We're going to break up into two teams. You know, one of the team would be um. Ah, but you know what? I was just talking about integrity and stuff. I guess Korra's team also um yeah, they would also not keep their word if you think about it in that way because uh as soon as they would get the airbenders uh suyin and lin would actually fight back i guess yeah you know what um <laughs> both were yeah both were not going to keep their words <laughs> i guess yeah like nothing you can do about it i guess i could scratch that integrity portion off of my like you know discussion part because yeah like they they didn't they were not and like you know they did not keep their words i'm talking about mm, Zahir's crew and I guess so like you know so would Korra's team do you know like they they would also do the same thing so just because they're heroes uh, we could not <laughs> you know like we, we should not just um forgive them for that if you think of it in that way just because it's because of justice you know they would also break their word you know they they promised that oh we are going to give Korra and in return you are going to bring the airbenders back and uh, Zahir had no intention of following that so did Korra's team so I guess yeah as it's nothing you can do about it <laughs> yeah yeah but still you know like Zahir's whole thing with Basing says it still doesn't sit right with me just you know like making the whole city pay for the price of the things that the queen did it's not something that I you know I, I appreciate him doing yeah anyways um so okay so yeah they decided to break up into two teams uh one would be on the airship while the other one would go to um, the, the the place the like mount lahima or something i said like that I, I forgot the name um where they would lie in wait and try to rescue Korra as soon as they get to know that the airbenders are safe but unfortunately, it did not work out that way. So we see here, um, what's his name? Zahir and Flea, them having a little conversation and then they kind of talked about it. And I guess I should have realized something was going to happen to either of them, either Zahir or Flea, because that whole interaction, you know, was like the final interaction they had. Now here's the thing interesting thing i kind of realized what is happening here he said something about uh going to the void and where is it yeah enter the void he was kind of meditating and all and become empty and become the wind all of that he was saying and as soon as flea gets in i realized that what he was doing here is that he was trying to like you know let go of his earthly um shackles but unfortunately that wouldn't happen as long as flea would be there and uh, yeah so she he would not be able to go to the void or go go like you know be enlightened you could say or reach that part like you know place where once guru like you know like lahima went to or was able to reach uh as long as you have earthly uh shackles binding you this wouldn't happen you couldn't like you know, do that just like how ang also went through the same thing where because of his feelings for Katara, he wasn't able to reach there, even though Guru um, Batik, yeah, you know, told him to let go of that. He wasn't able to do that. So, yeah, now the next scene, we kind of see them uh, reaching and breaking up into two groups. Uh, Tonrak, Lin, Suyin, 
Korra, they are like in one group and Korra would go alone obviously and they would lead like kind of, kind of lay in wait for them to come and grab Korra so that they can help Korra out after that, save them. And while all the on the other side, Mako and Mako Bolin and um, Asani, they are there. So <clears throat> they go to the air temple. Go, they can go in and they are like, all right, where are? Oh my god! And I was just saying this, you know. I was like, why are they not bringing the airbenders out? Why are we going in inside some like you know like like you know like a room or something? Why are we doing that? And yeah, it makes so much sense now. They wanted that darkness so that they could trick them with those dummy, uh, you know, like one of those fake airbenders uh, made by the the more water clones or whatever, made by the girl. And they get in and they're kind of talking in walkie-talkie and they're like, oh, I, we still haven't found the, like, you know, airbenders. And then they take them in and they see Tenzin and the others and... They're like, all right, like, like in the good plan I could say they made is because they kept Tenzin in front in the light so that everyone would focus on Tenzin instead of all the other people behind. They would just look at them and they'll be like, oh, they're there and Tenzin is also here. And obviously everyone will go and try to help Tenzin out because he's beaten up and all and not pay much attention to the people behind them. And uh, yeah, that plan succeeded. Asami and everyone just went to Tenzin and try help them out while they kind of saw that the airbenders were behind them and but they didn't pay much attention to them they just tried to patch Tenzin up and Tenzin was probably trying to say that oh these people behind they are fake and it was kind of like you know kind of mumbling and everything with the thing in his mouth and uh, yeah makes again makes so much sense why would they need to gag him because of this you know because Tenzin knew that the people behind them are fake he would have just told them but since the gag was there he wasn't able to do that and uh, like you know these this just was like the little advantage that um they needed uh the other uh, like you know like uh, the lava bender and the girl needed because you know like they were able to get Korra by that time and uh, they also didn't have to give up out the airbenders and as i said like you know like the integrity is gone but i guess if you think of it in that way cora and his her team would also not keep their word because they were planning to rescue cora after she gets captured and if you think of it in that neutral standpoint you could say both of them had no intention of keeping their word but you could say cora's team is in justice's pocket like you know what do you call it like justice's uh group so yeah now <laughs> this is an interesting thing you know like yeah like just because they are representing justice you know like i guess you could say they are allowed to not keep their word or tell a lie or something like that while at the same time we judge the other team just because they did not keep their word but they're doing the same thing you know like from their perspective they are justice while from the majority's perspective, Gora's team is justice. So, you know, like, just because Gora's team were not supposed to keep their word, we are like, ah, oh, it's fine, you know, because they are justice. While we are judging the Heel's team because they did not try to keep their word, because they are in the side of the villains, we are judging them. I'm like, oh, why did they do that? But if you think of it in a neutral standpoint, both of them did the same thing. Both of them had no intention keeping that word. So it's just something that I realized, you know. <laughs> but anyways, um, so okay, like everything goes completely wrong. Korra is just like, you know, has been, what do you call it? The platinum, you know, like it was used and she cannot get out of the shackles. But yeah, a huge fight happens here. Uh, she is just, a complete terror outside you know she's just defeating and attacking everyone just using the explosions and all and it's it's a mess while Tonrock comes in Tonrock tries to help Korra out and uh, unfortunately the, the shackle cannot be broken but Tonrock and Korra is handling themselves pretty well uh, while on the other side Suyin and Lin 
is fighting flee and uh, over there uh, the lava bender and the girl they're fighting uh, Marco and Bolin while Asami is trying to like you know help out Tenzin and they just used lava on that whole part and tried to like you know like decided to bring the whole temple down and they took the airship and ran away while here we are trapped Bolin is trying to like you know kind of uh, stop the lava unfortunately he cannot at that moment at least and Tenzin is like I have a plan we have like a secret door over here let me lead you and they lead them and they're trying to get out of there but the lava is still coming and uh, yeah that's what was happening there and while here again Korab and uh, Tarnak are fighting and uh, damn the the animations were really good I could I, I could say like you know the, the whole section was really well done oh and on the other side um lynn was like all right i'm going to distract her her while you finish the job and lynn went out and lynn kind of distracted flee attacked them my god i was not expecting that i i thought suin was going to throw some rock at her eye or something she was get, going to get stunned and wouldn't be able to do anything it was going to be something like that I that that was something I had oh my god that was insane she used her armor threw it towards um flea and it when she was going to use the explosion the armor went and captured like in a kind of like, surrounded her head and it blew out her face my god and and yeah, they, they, they really did not show that. Obviously, this is supposed to be, you know, like airing on TV and they ca cannot do this. But oh my God, I could just imagine what happened there. Yeah, like <laughs> her head blew up over there and that's it. Like n no one can save her from that. No one, n nothing, nothing can save her from that. And Zahir goes there and as soon as he sees that, his earthly shackle is gone and he is able to tap into that void and goes into that place where Guru Lahima was able to get one like you know and he can fly now so uh, so he was able to do what Aang wasn't able to do because Katara was there and uh, yeah most people he was able to do what most people aren't able to do because of their loved ones because now I guess you could say that he has comrades, but he definitely does not have someone shackling him down in, in, on earth. You know, the earthly desires and everything is just gone. That shackle has been broken. And uh, yeah, he, he just grabs Kora and starts flying. And that's just it. So thankfully, Tornrock is fine. Uh, what's her name? Kuvira? I think she saved him. Like, I'm guessing she's going to be one of the characters i don't know what she should probably be important later on otherwise why would should they suddenly give like a, a a random like you know soldier a name and like let us get introduced to her or something so yeah now on the other side bolin and uh marco they are trapped and my god i was really concerned when the lava came and encompassed bolin and he was screaming i'm like what the hell is happening but then we saw like you know him just lava bending it and i'm like damn there you go and uh, i wonder if he'll be able to metal bend as well later on because lava bending is also a really amazing technique so if he can also metal bend after this if he's able to use metal bending as well damn like bowling will be really really good you know like really versatile with his uh you know bending then he can lava bend he can metal bend like he can <laughs> yeah all right, Kai comes in and uh, oh my god, I was feeling bad for the little thing, the little bison. <laughs> Everyone just <laughs> just started riding on top of him, just almost <laughs> collapsing the thing. And yeah, they are able to get down. Uh, Tenzin is fine. While on the other hand, uh, the airbenders are nowhere on, in the site. And uh, yeah, they talk about... Um, Zahir, how he's able to fly this and that and you know, they, they realize the earthly shackles are gone or whatever and Kai here says like I know 
where they are. And he says that there's like, they snuck them to some kind of cave and there were a few others of them as well. Which are members of the Red Lotus, I'm guessing, as they said. So, the problem here is we need Bison. Thankfully, Ugi comes in and Ugi, we are able to get on top of Ugi. And uh, yeah, we are on our way to rescue Korra. Uh, not Korra, sorry, uh, rescue the Airbenders. But we don't, and, and, and as, as, as they say, like, you know, Korra is also probably close to the airbender somewhere so they'll also be able to find Korra as well if they find the airbender all right the final part is where we see like Zaire has been completely ascended you could say he as he said like and i found true freedom as soon as the shackle was broken and he's like levitating and everything like damn then he is like all right i am like he he has something i still don't understand what the hell his plan is He's like, bring the poison. And I don't know what, it was that mercury. I think that was like mercury or something. Like, what is that? I have no idea. Like some kind of sludgy thing. Looks like mercury. And I don't know what the hell they're going to do with that. Like, oh my God. Yeah, and they call it poison so we'll see like next episode okay, and okay i think like this has 13 episodes so the next uh, week's reaction will be episode 13 and i'll also react to the first episode of season 4 so yeah that's what i'm going to do next week but yeah that is where it ends like damn two episodes back to back action that was that was insane so the final battle will happen next week, I'm guessing. So we'll see. So that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. This was my reaction to uh, The Legend of Korra, book three, episode number 11 and 12. So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button. Subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed. Comment down below anything you want to say, anything you want to let me know. And uh, yeah, I'll check them out. So that's it. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys next week with two more episodes of The Legend of Korra. Uh, book three and i'll also start book four episode one as i said so yeah see you guys then until then goodbye and have a nice day